Hey guys, this is Ray's Boathouse, the restaurant in Seattle where Chris Cornell worked as a sous chef back when he was a teenager. There are two levels to this restaurant, and according to the staff I spoke with, Chris Cornell worked mostly on the lower floor. At the time of this recording, it's September of 2020, and due to the COVID lockdown, the restaurant has closed off its bottom floor, but one of the staff members here was kind enough to let me take a quick peek downstairs. A big thank you to the staff here in general for allowing me to film inside the restaurant. During Chris Cornell's time working here, KISW, Seattle's rock station, would often be dialed in and Chris Cornell would sing along with the radio from time to time. Ernie Davis, one of the staff during Chris Cornell's time at the restaurant, recalls the following, quote, He'd sing very softly. We'd all be listening. Oh, Chris is going to sing. Let me turn this down. Another one of Chris Cornell's co-workers was a man named Dwayne Oshes, who was a dishwasher at Ray's. Dwayne and Chris became friends and would sometimes jam together at Chris Cornell's house. It was there that Dwayne said he first took note of Chris Cornell's vocal abilities. Chris Cornell was in his early teens at the time, and according to Dwayne, not even the Cornell family knew yet that he had a talent for singing. Dwayne recalls the following from one of his jam sessions with Chris Cornell. His sisters were out in the driveway, and they're like, Who was singing? Who was that? I'm like, it was Chris. He was a very adequate drummer, but when he got behind the mic, you could tell, like his sisters, he had a very unique, powerful voice. Another one of Chris Cornell's former co-workers was Dean Swanson. He recalls that during a staff Christmas party when Chris Cornell was about 17, 18, he really showed off his vocals. Chris, for some reason, got up from the table we were sitting at and went over and grabbed the microphone and talked to the guys for a few minutes and he belted out twist and shout. He was a teenager. We're all looking at him going, uh, what are you doing, dude? I mean, his voice was so powerful and wonderful. Not only was Ray's one of the places Chris first started showcasing his vocal abilities, the original drummer in Soundgarden, Scott Sundquist, was a maintenance worker at Ray's, so the Chris Cornell Soundgarden connection to Ray's is multifaceted. Furthermore, as Soundgarden was coming together in the mid-80s, Chris Cornell left Ray's and started working at Rain City Grill. Rain City Grill was owned by a man named Mike Brown, who used to be Ray's kitchen boss. Chris and his brother Peter Cornell would often practice guitar out on the back stairwell of Rain City Grill. In March of 1997, a month before Soundgarden broke up, Chris Cornell made a surprise visit to Ray's. After 22 years at Ray's, Chris Cornell's old boss, Wayne Ludwigson, was leaving the restaurant, and so the staff threw him a going-away party, which Chris Cornell attended. That was the last time Wayne and Chris saw each other. Regardless, even despite all the time that went by, Wayne has said that the news of Chris Cornell's death was like losing a family member for him. Reflecting on his 1997 going-away party, Wayne recalls the following. I told him how proud we all were for his success, and how I missed him. Of course, we could believe how well he did, because we knew the talent was there. But we were so proud of what he became. All in all, Chris Cornell's connections to Ray's runs deep, and the staff here are well aware of it. I talked to a few of them about it, actually, and one of the waitresses told me she's actually friends with Chris Cornell's daughter, Tony, so the Cornell-Ray's connection lives on. If you're ever in Seattle, make sure to swing by. It's a great restaurant, and the staff are really cool. One other thing I want to show you guys is that there's actually another Chris Cornell related location that's not too far from Ray's. 
West Point Lighthouse is the location where Temple of the Dog's music video for Hunger Strike was filmed. It's about 30 minutes northwest of downtown Seattle. Ray's Boathouse is located not too far from West Point Lighthouse. Granted, it does take about 20 minutes to get from one to the other, but regardless, they're still not too far from each other. I posted a separate video of footage from West Point Lighthouse, some of the locations where Hunger Strike was filmed. I've linked that video in the description box below the full video, and I'm going to play a little bit of it here now as well. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe for more. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Lots more to come.